Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we're talking about why we think it's a bad idea to buy things you don't want in hopes of getting the allocated hookup. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today we're talking about not buying bottles you don't want in order to get bottles you do want, which on the surface seems like a terrible idea, but is kind of commonly spread advice mm -hmm. in a lot of online circles when it, people are looking for allocated products. Yeah. So it's something that we want to address. This episode is kind of for those people who are just getting into bourbon in a really nerdy way and they're getting really excited and they want to go out and they want to find their Weller and their Blantons mm -hmm. and the Buffalo Trace and the Eagle Rare, all these products that they see other people posting and talking about. So we kind of want to face that head on yep. because we've, we've gone through this ourselves. Yeah. I've gone through this myself. So. By we, I mean he. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So this is just our experience with all that. Before we get into our main topic, Aaron, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. We just filmed another uh, podcast uh, video where we talked about the 90s. So I'm super pumped because I love the 90s. So yeah, I'm in really a does. really good headspace. Yeah. <laughs> how are this, you? This will come out after that. So you can see it. It's last week's episode. Yeah. Last week's video podcast episode. Yeah. But I'm doing well as well. And I had a lot of fun talking about the 90s, too, because yeah. we're both 80s babies, but formative years in the 90s. Kids, it was a we'll ton say. of fun. Yeah. yeah. Tonight for our quick sips portion, where we do a little quick sip of Whoa. a product we're talking about for, I know, right? Like so cleverly <laughs> named. <laughs> but this is Four Roses Small Batch Select. The reason that we chose to do this tonight is because I, I wasn't aware that this wasn't in all the markets. This is something that is starting to spread out into more markets. The was, single barrel select, isn't it? The small batch select. Small batch select. Yeah. Okay. So the small batch and the single barrels are in most every market out okay. there. And then the yellow label, which is kind of like a tan label now. I don't even know what they actually call it. Everybody just called it the yellow label. Mm -hmm. Now it's tan. But this is kind of their fourth rose okay. of their regular offerings. Ooh. This is a small batch select. So is this like the bachelor four rows fourth rows <laughs> i don't know like anything the about the bachelor ceremony? i can't tell you i've only seen like a few, your question. a few episodes of yeah. in nashville when yeah. the guys in nashville were in but we're gonna try this and we're gonna let you guys know what we think about it this is our way of giving you kind of like a not like a review but our first impressions yeah. on it because we can't always get the things in our head-to-heads because they're double blind and they're chosen at random so have i had this before i don't know if you've ever had this before or not i've I've had a little bit. You've had a little. <laughs> and it's in our it's in our double blind head to head. Okay. But we haven't had it in our head to head no, yet. No, not yet. It smells like liquor. Yeah. <laughs> it's fruity sweet on the nose. You definitely get a lot of the fruity sweetness. Four Roses is kind of known for being cool. floral. It's good. You like it? I didn't get a 100, lot. 104 proof. I didn't get a lot from the smell, but the taste is good. Yeah, 104 proof, non-chill filtered, they say. That means they just don't run it through a filtration process, so it's supposed to give a little bit more viscosity and, and better mouthfeel. Okay. Four Roses is kind of known for being floral. I mean, I'm a big fan of Four Roses single barrel nowadays, and Four Roses small batch was something that was like back into the mid-2000s, back in mm. my college years, was kind of right after college, was kind of my go-to for New Year's parties, was taking Four Roses small batch. It's good. It is good. It's like not my favorite I've ever had though. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I've drank a lot of this bottle and a lot of it has been comparing it to other things. Yeah. It's wildly weird at 104 proof. Like it somehow doesn't drink 104 proof, but also drinks much hotter than 104 proof. It, it is kind of hot. Like it's got some spiciness to well, it. Well, and you'll appreciate this. Four Roses is a high rye bourbon. Mm. So their rye content Corn is the primary grain, but their rye content as a secondary grain, the flavoring grain, is much higher than almost any other distillery out there. Gotcha. So you get a little bit of tempered sweetness, you get a little bit more of those rye characteristics, maybe some citrus sweetness, some floral sweetness. With this particular product, I don't love it. And if you do find it in your market, I do think it's worth buying once, but what if I were to tell you that this is a $30 product? Would you be happy to buy it for that? $30 product? 
Um, probably not because I've had other $30 products that I like more. It's not a $30 product. It's a $60 to $65 product. I mean, <laughs> if you like it, then $60 to $65 isn't a bad price. But if it's just, just okay, like for me, it's just okay. I $65 is a little too much when I can yeah. buy other things that I like better for less Yeah. or comparable. I think that's where I land on this too. It's a good product. I like it. I don't necessarily like it for the price. Yeah. I personally would rather spend 40 or $45 on a Four Roses single barrel. Okay. But this bottle is beautiful mm -hmm. and it does make a good gift and it is approachable and it is unique. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. It is, it's not your traditional bourbon. It tastes like bourbon, but it's got its own twist. Four mm -hmm. Roses is kind of doing their own thing. And it is, it's a good product. Yeah. So it's worth trying once if you see it in your market to find out if you like it or not. But it, just know that it does come with a steep price tag and it could be a little polarizing. Could so be. You could love it or hate it. You could love it or hate it. So yeah. just be aware. So that's our quick sip for Four Roses Small Batch Select. Let's get into our main topic, talking about whether you should buy products that you maybe don't want in hopes of getting something you do want. There's no spoiler alert here. We've already told you we think that's a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. So for us personally, there's a few reasons why we don't do this. We covered some of them in last week's episode, but this is a gamble. Mm -hmm. If you're buying products you don't want, first off, you're spending money on things you don't want. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Yeah. And it's a gamble because you don't know where you fall in the pecking order. Maybe you're hoping that if you spend $2,000 at this store over, over the, the course, course of, of time, a year, yeah. then at the end of the year, you're going to get a bottle of George T. Stagg or something like that. And you may get a bottle of Weller Special Reserve for all you know. Like you don't know what you're going to get. There's no guarantees with this. So you may get nothing. You may, you may get nothing. And if you get something, it may be something you don't even want. But where is the truth in this type of advice? I do think there is like a kernel of merit in here. Yeah, where did, why is it given out so readily? Where this can come into benefit is if you're looking for things at a store, you don't have to go in and say, hey, do you have any blends? And they say no, and you're like, okay, I'll buy X bourbon instead that you don't even want. Maybe you do buy something you didn't intend to buy, like we said in the shop local episode, and you ask them for a recommendation when you can't get the allocated product you're looking for, maybe you find something you actually like even better than yeah. the allocated product that you thought you wanted. Yeah, that's happened to us. It has. Sometimes. It has. A few times. But it's also an opportunity to explore other things as well. So mm -hmm. like maybe you go in looking for a specific bourbon and you go in, you don't see it on the shelf, you ask about it. It's not there. You're not getting your hands on it that day. So instead, look at that as an opportunity to maybe try something totally different. Maybe you want to experiment with a cocktail, grab a couple of ingredients for that. Ask them, ask the, the store clerk or the owner. They they do this all day, every day. They, they can give you some recommendations. Too. Exactly. I mean, we're of the opinion that honesty is the best policy. So if you go in looking for Blanton's and you ask them and you're, Hey, do you have a Blanton's? And they tell you flat out, no, we don't have any say, okay, I came in to buy a Blanton's. Is there anything else you would recommend instead? That's a great you, way yeah. to start building a relationship with a local store. And you might be surprised at what you find that you end up really liking. Yeah. Or you might try it and not like it. And then if it's a, some, something similar to the product you were gonna buy, maybe that gives you an inkling like, oh, well, maybe I don't think I might, will end up liking Blanton's or whatever the yeah. product is. Maybe I shouldn't spend all my money on it yet, quite yet. And when you're that person that's in and out and you're asking questions and they see you on a regular basis and they can see that you're interested in learning and going on the journey, then they are gonna be more inclined to give you allocated products if you ask for them. Again, as we said in the Shop Local episode, you don't wanna be disingenuous about this relationship. Mm -hmm. You want to treat it as you would any relationship and go in being honest with them, going on the journey. And it, it can be so much fun. You might find things that you didn't even know you liked, like we said. That certainly happened to us. Yep. It killed a lot of our FOMO. 
Yeah. Because there were a lot things, of your FOMO. A lot of my FOMO. You don't you don't really suffer from FOMO, but not, whis- were, not whiskey FOMO. Not whiskey. But there were things that I wanted. I saw people posting about. I really wanted to try them. I wanted to get my hands on a bottle. I found out I didn't really like them all that much. Yeah. I mean, they're good, but they're not any better than a lot of other things out there. That's something I learned that I never would have had I not asked questions and started building a relationship with a local store. So there's a lot of merit in this, Mm -hmm. we feel like. Mm -hmm. But definitely don't go in and just buy stuff you don't want in hopes of getting the hookup for something. If you want, like if you have a wife that's interested in wine or you yourself are interested in wine, I like wine, you Mm -hmm. like wine. Yeah. We love pairing wine with meals. Pizza. Pizza, steak, whatever. Pasta. (laughs) You're naming a lot of carbs. Warm carbohydrates. (laughs) Wine. Yeah. Match made in heaven. What more do you need, right? (laughs) But, you know, even if it's not even whiskey related and you're going over to the wine front, that's great. Hey, do you have a bottle of Blanton's? No, we don't have any Blanton's. Okay, cool. Do you have a recommendation on wine? We're cooking this meal. What would you recommend that I pair with it? Mm -hmm. That can go such a long way Mm -hmm. in helping you establish a relationship. Again, like we said, honesty is the best policy and don't be disingenuous about your relationships. It's, it's, It's a bad look. It is. All right, so that's it for our main topic. Let's get into other stuff. What you got? This week, I'm very excited because let's say you do go into your store. They don't have what you want. So instead, they recommend that you try something else. Mm -hmm. So you get that product that you didn't think you wanted and you get it home and you start tasting it. I think it's really helpful to start taking some notes on what you're getting. Mm. And if you're a whiskey person, then you're probably enjoying some of the experience of the process. I am that way. And I also like tactile things. I like to enjoy those types of things. Mm -hmm. So my other stuff for this week is going to be a cheap fountain pen by fountain pen standards and a good notebook of good paper. So Mm -hmm. this is Rhodia. This is a Rhodia meeting book, but this is just like a little book that I use to take notes. And the reason that I use this, and I have notes in here of things that I've tasted and tasting notes, ratings, all kinds of stuff. And it's so cool for me to be able to just sit down, take this fountain pen, you know, right? So old school of you. It it is kind of old school, but like whiskey is kind of an old school thing as well. That's true. That's true. So if you're into that, then... If you're into writing and things. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not even into writing. I don't love writing. I actually hate writing. <laughs> but I've found that I really enjoy taking notes about whiskeys that I've tried yeah. and comparing them over the course yeah. of time. And without the notes, I don't have that frame of reference. All I have to rely on is my memory. Well, and you're getting older. Your memories. I'm getting older. Kinda, my memory's so not as good. If you're having a lot of pores, your memory might not be as good. There's a lot of reasons why your memory might not be as good. Yeah. So to have it written down in here to make some notes on something is really cool. This pen right here, you'll see it in many of the episodes. This is the Lamy AL Star or the All Star. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but it's that because it's aluminum, but there's also a plastic mm. version called the Safari that's even cheaper. I think about $20. I think this is maybe 30 or $40. Don't quote me on that. The link is in the description below. I have a question about this. Yes. Is this paper pretty good? Like you can't yeah. see through? So much? when you're using a fountain pen, the paper matters. Like you mm-hmm. can't just write on any paper. It'll bleed through. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. When you're using a good paper, there is a absolute tactile feedback that you get that is so satisfying. Like yeah. I love it. And I'm, I'm being a super nerd right now, but I don't even care. I really, really do love this. So. I would recommend picking up the AL Star Lamy or the Lamy Safari for even cheaper, Mm -hmm. getting you a little Rhodia notebook to start keeping some notes in to track your pours over time. And we even print our scoring rubrics that we do for our head to heads. We print those on a thicker paper Mm -hmm. that has a little bit of bite to it so that the fountain pen can really get into it because I enjoy even using that while we're doing our head to heads. It's just like a little treat all to myself. So. I would recommend checking this stuff out. I'll even link some ink below. I use a Pilot, kind of a deep indigo ink that's really, really nice, Mm -hmm. but there's all kinds of different colors. You can totally nerd out on this, and you might have heard of Mont Blanc, which is like a $1,000 fountain pen. I've been to Mont Blanc in France. Good for you. Yeah. I never have. 
Let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's start saving and pinching our pennies. I gotta stop spending money on whiskey first. Good luck. Yeah, you know. Happen. But yeah, so <laughs> I absolutely recommend checking this stuff out. I love it. And if you love this channel, <laughs> then you should check out our Patreon link. We're gonna put it below right here. And it's also in the description below. But you can go there, you can support the channel for as little as $3 a month. There's all kinds of offerings above that. We try to bring all the value to mm -hmm. you guys. We want you to have all the information that we have garnered over the lifetime of this channel. As young as it is now, it's gonna grow. You can also get plugged into the Stuff and Whiskey community there. Yes, we have a- it's going to be growing over time. Discord channel where oh, you yeah. can chat with each other. Yeah, you don't really participate in social media. I also don't really participate in social media. So if you want a direct line to talk to us, get our opinions on anything for whatever reason, <laughs> I don't know why you would, but if you do, you can do that below. But you can also see how we score everything. Yeah. You get access to our scoring rubrics. There's a ton of resources there. We want it to add value to your experience. Yep. Just like a nice pen and paper. Just day. like it. So that's it for this week, guys. Aaron, take us out of here. Speaking of nice pens and paper, Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. <laughs> All right. Was that creepy or what? It didn't make any sense, but it keep didn't. Going. It didn't. Um, but yeah, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. We really would appreciate it. It does help that YouTube algorithm. I know people talk about that a lot, but it truly does help. It, it does. It pushes our video out to other people and it suggests it to them. So um it really would help us out get our small little channel off the ground um and also if you want to subscribe to our channel to keep seeing content like this we post two videos a week right now we do blind head to heads and podcast videos like this so we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe and to be notified you can hit that bell notification so you don't miss one ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling. that was nice <laughs> till next week guys cheers, cheers. all right <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Copy me. Copy me. <laughs> Get out of here. I haven't done that since I was like <laughs> ten. That was so fun. <laughs> now you see what the appeal now is. I know why people do kids do that. Oh, so fun. It's the worst. I want to do it again. You watch out, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh and I'm Aaron. And today we're talking about why we think it's a bad idea to buy things you don't want in hopes of getting the allocated hookup. Nailed it. Oh, not that. Didn't nail that. <laughs> <laughs> I always heard you're supposed to like lead with the elbow. Oh, see? I learned that in that's, elementary school. That's left-handed too. Good for you. All right, so. All right, here we go. All right, hang on. Let's get into our main topic. Every time you say all right, I need to take a sip. Scene five. No, you'll die. You'll die. I will die from alcohol die. poisoning. I'm gonna transition to the main topic. So we've already talked about common advice, and we're gonna talk about why we don't do it. So, all right. So transition to main topic. All right. So, all right. So, all right. So. Oh my gosh, dude. I've got speech issues, and you're further derailing me. I'm sorry. Stay focused. I can't. All right. So I did it on purpose. All right. Oh, your neuroses is killing me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Got it>. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to put this in bloopers. People won't appreciate it. No, they won't. <laughs>